Maybe you've heard that birds and bees can see ultraviolet light and felt a little left out. After all, the world could always benefit from more colors. So why do we only see a combination of these three colors? The easiest answer to why we see colors is simply that we evolved to see those colors. Any other answer is more or less conjecture. But obviously that's a hack answer. The better question is why would one evolve to see these specific colors? I'll imagine you already know what the visible spectrum of light is. If not, there's a lot of videos that can describe it as well as I could. What you probably took away from such videos is just how small that sliver of light is and how strange it is that we are only sensitive to this tiny portion. But when we look at the world we live in, it makes sense. The sun provides all of the high energy radiation in our world. If we're going to be sensitive to light, it should probably be light that comes from our sun. Let's take a look at the Planck spectrum, or the light emitted from the sun distributed across the entire electromagnetic spectrum. Oh, well that's starting to make sense. Most of the sun's light it produces is, well, in the visible spectrum. So of all the possible colors or frequencies of the electromagnetic spectrum we could see, most of them would definitely be drowned out by the light produced here. But there's still a decent chunk of light produced from the sun that we can't see. Why not? There's no definitive reason, but we can infer that compared to visible light, there's not enough of it to be worthwhile. We can visualize a proxy of this. Here's a color that includes some green, but not a lot. A single pixel would look like this, but altogether, the red light dominates and you can't see any green light. Since visible light is the most abundant radiation on Earth, any other light would be similarly drowned out. But how does this work? Light can interact with anything with an electric charge. So if you can make something that goes, whoa, light is interacting with me, we can see something that's otherwise undetectable. That's how antennas work. In our eyes, we have our own little antenna-like cells called rods and cones. When light interacts with them, they signal to the brain, hey, there's light out here. If we get enough signals, we can map out what that looks like. Within rods and cones are hundreds of membrane discs, and within the surface of these membranes are countless more pigment proteins called opsins. Binded to one of the amino acids of this protein is a chromophore called retinol. Retinol is our antenna. Normally, it looks like this. But when a photon or light of the correct frequency comes along, it can excite this double bond and cause retinol to rotate and change shape into this. This acts like flipping a switch, which causes the opsin protein to also change its shape. This slight change in shape now creates an affinity for binding with another protein called transducin. Now that transducin is bounded to this activated opsin, its shape changes and it no longer wants to bind to this guy, instead he wants his bigger brother GTP. Then this section called the alpha subunit detaches completely and says, I'm gonna go live with GTP. Now, two of these dudes floating around can bind with another protein called phosphodiesterase, and then phosphodiesterase can hydrolyze this molecule that's also floating around the cell. Cyclic GMP normally activates sodium pumps on the cell's outer membrane, but now hydrolyzed, it can no longer do so, and sodium stops entering the cell. This drop in sodium changes the internal polarization, or ion concentration of the cell, which turns it off. This stops the cell from releasing glutamate, which is the excitatory neurotransmitter. Now we could trace this path further, but simply put, this reduction in glutamate signals to this neighboring neuron that, hey, there's some light over here, and that signal gets sent to be processed by the brain. It's pretty freaking crazy how complex simple things like that are. Color is our brain trying to decipher the frequencies of the light that enters your eye. This is done by comparing relative excitation of cones. Because our antenna, retinol, is mildly influenced by the conformation of the opsin protein it's bound to, these slight variations in opsin cause slight variations in the internal energy of retinol, meaning it needs a different amount of energy to change its conformation. So our cones, the photoreceptors that detects what we perceive as color, each have a unique opsin protein which causes absorption of a specific wavelength of light. 
Our brain then compares how many of each cone are activated to determine what kind of light is entering our eye. If there was just one cone, let's pretend just the green one, then if we imagine say 80% of our green cones were activated, that could mean three things. Either the light is a slightly higher or lower frequency than green light, or it's a perfectly green light but at low intensity so as not to activate almost all of the green cones. All our brain knows is that the frequency is somewhere around here. If we add red cones, we can see that most green light also activates some red cones. Now we can just compare the ratio of red cones being activated to the green cones. The ratio will tell us the frequency and the total number, the intensity. When we add a third cone, our blue cone, we are simply adding an extra data set to compare ratios with and then further pinpoint what frequency of light we are seeing. But why those colors? This answer is more or less, you gotta trust nature on this one. If seeing more colors had created a definite benefit to our species, then that trait would have been naturally selected. The truth is, there are people who can see more colors than most of us. They're called tetrachromats, and they're individuals who possess four unique cones or color receptors. It's thought that between 10 and 20% of women have this trait, but not all of them have the fourth cone activated. Does this mean that these women see more colors than we do? Well. No, not really, because what we perceive as color is simply ratios of signals sent to our brains. But with four measurements, tetrachromats have more data and ratio sets to compare and further pinpoint the frequency of light entering their eyes. So they can detect differences in color far better than we can. They are notorious for seeing colors in what most would see as white. For example, if we had a wavelength in between the regions detected by two cones, then the signal is fuzzy. The difference between this frequency and this frequency is small. So our mind would say, based off the amount of blue and green cones being activated, the wavelength is probably like here, but I can't guarantee an accurate reading from both blue and green cone signals. So it's not easy to pinpoint. If, however, a fourth cone appeared in between, then it would further help pinpoint exactly which wavelength was entering our eyes. These two reds look the same to me, but to a tetrachromate, it may look something like this. So although they don't see new and exciting colors, tetrachromats can see a larger number of shades and hues of the colors we do, and also find colors in places we normally couldn't. Now I couldn't find any papers discussing the absorption spectrum of this mutation, but the fourth cone is a mutation of the green cone, so its spectrum is probably nearby, either slightly shifted to the red or blue direction. Finally, why don't we see ultraviolet radiation? After all, bees do, why are they so special? Well, for starters, it's important for bees to find the right flower in a sea of yellow flowers. So it's important that they detect higher frequency wavelengths to further narrow down the flowers they are seeing. But we don't have an analogous situation. The first thing to remember is that we don't see most light waves because they would be drowned out by visible light. So without needing to identify special flowers quickly, there's little reason. Ultraviolet light at 300 nanometers is rapidly absorbed by the cornea, losing 60% of its intensity. Smaller wavelengths get absorbed even faster. So even if we could see it, the conditions where ultraviolet light is most prevalent, a sunny day, already has plenty of visible light to drown it out. So really, we're only missing this little section of light. And again, you gotta trust nature. If we needed to see this section, well, we probably would.